Yo, how's it going guys? My name is Top Secret R35 and welcome back to a brand new series here on the channel. For my next 10 videos, we'll be taking a look at unique driving games that are currently available to wheel users and I couldn't be more excited for this. So these aren't like reviews or anything of the game. Obviously, I'm not qualified to give my opinion like that. This is just first impressions and pretty much just seeing how it feels to drive the car in these games. So game number one needs no introduction. It's the game you see in front of you here. This is Forza Horizon 5. And as you guys know, I've based my entire channel on this game at one point in time. And if you're an OG, OG subscriber, you might even recognize that this is not the first time I've had a Pokemon on the side of a car. So Forza Horizon 5, released in 2021 by Playground Games, the go-to open-world arcade racing game. So I've got C. Toretto Studio on this GTR, and for the past few weeks I've been trying to learn how to drift. It's, uh, it's coming along nicely, and uh, I do quite like it. I am not good in the third-person drifting, but like that's typically how the drifting goes in this game, because you know, people want to see what the car looks like and so on and so forth. Anyway, moving along to today's video, we are going to do two races. I'm going to do Horizon Mexico Circuit, a little bit of a street race and see what it's like to race, race, race. And then we'll do an off-road race. And uh, that should give me a good overview and give you guys a good visual as to what it's like to drive in this game with a steering wheel, with force feedback and gears and whatever, so on and so forth. So for me right now to like comfortably race i think a class is pretty much where i'm at and why not let's take this porsche 911 gt2 500 horsepower wide body it's beautiful i must say ever since playing this game on pc with the wheel it's kind of gotten a new life for me i was really bored of it on the xbox so don't roast me too hard in the comments here but uh, i'm driving on average driver to our difficulty i can't do anything better than that at the moment Simulation, steering, traction, and stability off, and then I just need to know where to brake. So, uh, let's get started. So I'll do the first lap in third-person view, and then I'm going to switch to in-car, because that is where it's really at to get the feeling of the car. But third person looks more pretty. You can see more of the environment. And it's a bit more dynamic. You can see the cars and so on and so forth. Jeez, these guys are racing like crap. So I was definitely better with a controller. I mean, obviously, I've been playing this game on controller for what? Eight years? I don't know when Forza Horizon initially came out. I can't think right now. And playing with ABS off is also pretty dangerous here. Because every time I hit the brakes, I'm locking them up, so I need to actually be a bit more gentle on the brake. Let's try that over here. There we go, that kind of helped. Woo! -hoo. See ya! Lamborghini in fifth position now. And one lap down. I've done so many laps here, at least I know this track. So that makes me feel good. Alright, time to switch to in-car view here. And now is when the real racing starts, I'll tell you that much. Woo! Woo! A little bit of sideways action there. So I did watch uh, Hoki Hoshi's review, right? On uh, could you buy a wheel to play Forza Horizon 5. And I think he was spot on. Though. So apparently Forza Horizon 5 is some major improvements in terms of wheel users for, for wheel users compared to Forza Horizon 4 and obviously I can't comment on that because I only played 4 with a controller whoa I switched to first accidentally there so my level of engagement and my level of fun with the wheel on this game obviously goes up but uh, in terms of being competitive no ways man you gotta you gotta play this game with the controller I'm sorry it's just the inputs are still more arcadey than there'll ever be simulation, in my opinion. But I am having fun chasing this. I think it's a Diablo in front of me here. Yeah, definitely a Diablo. Take him on the inside here. Yeah? Oh, clean racing, man. 
Oh, he hit me. So, another thing that I'll mention, right, is if you're seeing this video, that means I've completed all 10 of these videos with me trying out new games with a wheel. Uh, in the past, I've had this problem of like, I'll start a series, and then maybe if the first video doesn't do well or something, I'll start doubting myself. That's why I'm doing things a little bit differently this time. And uh, I just definitely want to get more into racing, you know? As a car channel, I should be doing more racing, more online racing, equipment, endurance, I don't know, all sorts of stuff. Holy crap, I'm actually in first year. Oh, come on, Ferrari. No, what are you doing? Woo -hoo. Close finish. Oh, that was fun. That was actually really good. That's the best I've had. And I've been practicing a lot on this difficulty. So I'm pretty glad with that. Anyway, let's move along to the rally race. So I came across this airfield cost crunchy circuit. And this one looks like it's a lot of fun. Uh, let's give it a go. All right, guys, here we go. Second race of the day. Chris Forsberg's 370Z in the cross-country off-road race. So without a doubt, my biggest problem when uh, driving rally cars in this game is that when they start to oversteer, i.e. drift, I find it very difficult to catch it. I either like have to slow down completely or I try to overcorrect and then the car will uh, start to fishtail and it's like impossible for me to bring it back. So as soon as it starts happening, I have to like, you know, be on the brakes and stuff like that. Where you see like these clips of these rally drivers when it starts to uh, oversteer for them, they just plant it and they slide the car and it's all perfect. So uh, I think that's definitely my lack of skill that's contributing to that. So yep, yeah, there we go. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. So that was an example of me not correcting properly. So anyway, let's go into in-person view, yeah? Let's see what this lap brings. I think with the in-person, it's much easier to get the feedback when that car starts to step out like that and try to like fix it. So we're in seventh place now. Let's see where we finish this race. All right, so typically right around here, is where the car starts to drift. Yep, it's doing it now, it's doing it now. So I'm gonna try to catch it. Yeah, there we go. So over here, I just get that sense of what the car is doing much more than in the third person view. And in the third person view, it's like too late. And then you start fishtailing and you never get it back. And with that being said, we're in first place and it's the last lap, so this is awesome. I can get my accolade for finishing this race in first if it carries on like this. There we go. That's how you correct. That's how you correct. Big jump. Uh, back's going to step out a little bit there. We, we catch it. We catch it. Oh, yes. Thank goodness. Woo! I definitely get the sense of the G's in first person mode much better. And Hokey Hoshi did say that you kind of have to play in first person, otherwise, like, well, like you saw, you end up losing it real quick. So I keep shaking the steering wheel, as you see. I'm just trying to find out where the grip is. Oh, that force feedback right now is really good. Oh, oh no, no, no. See, that's what happens when you're a little too confident. Your first place becomes an eight. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this first video of trying different racing games with the racing wheel and seeing what they're like. Forza Horizon? That's definitely fun, man. It's fun. It's definitely worth it if you have a wheel to give it a go. Obviously, it's more of a nice time than it is a complete simulator, but it is cool and it looks stunning as well, by the way. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.